Today we are in the wilderness to talk about merch sort. All right, we're gonna be responsible park goers and read the map and know which way to go. Okay, never mind. Let's go this way. Too complicated. Holy crap! This is huge. Look at that. This looks like a cool place to do it. We got a little trail going here. A little sign. That's how I say. I can't even focus. The Bell Island Trail. Yeah, then you focus right over there. All right, time to mic up. Ow. So let's see if, if I can talk. Let's see. We're gonna have all our stuff here. A little fancy camera set up. All right, merge sort. We have our really crappy microphone set up and I'm walking into position. This is the second time we've tried to kind of create a video setup. Last time we made overarching generalizations about people's futures. Let's not do that again this time. So merge sort is one of the fast sorting algorithms that we have in computer science. It runs in n log n time in its worst, best, and average case um, because of the nature of how it works it doesn't really work on any heuristic it works on an overarching knowledge of how an input is sorted and halves that input reaches its base cases and remerges that input in a sorted order so when we have the input, we only know about the to total ordering quality of the input. We don't really know anything of special about the input. If we did, we could do our fancier sorting algorithms like counting sort, um, bucket sort, things like that that work on integers because we have a certain heuristic to operate off of to sort faster. Other sorting algorithms can run faster than this, but n log n is very fast for a general sorting algorithm. This is why merge sort is a fantastic algorithm, and this is why we're going to cover it today. Let's walk through an example of merge sort. How's it going? How you doing? Good. What a cute doggo. All right, so let's project our little example here of an array with 19, 8, negative 13, 2, negative 5, 4, 130. So we're going to walk through how merge sort would merge this input. When you see diagrams where they have those forks going down level by level all at once, merge sort does do the splitting of the input like this, but it doesn't do it all at once. It does it in sort of a backtracking way. So let's trace this and just follow along with me and you'll start to get the idea. So we start with the input and we split the input in half, we go left, and then we split the input in half again, we, we go left, and then we reach our base case of 19. This is where we re return to our caller with the left sorted portion of the array 19, 8, and then we go right, and then we sort the array subarray. 8 is a base case because a single element is a sorted array. Merge sort, the call to the merge sort function will always return a sorted array. So when we reach a single element, we do have a sorted array, so we can return that. that. That is a base case, or an empty array. So we return 8, and then now we have two sorted arrays to work with, an array of 19, just 19, and an array of just 8. We merge those together into a sorted array and return it as the sorted array 8, 19. And now that is the left portion of the call 19, 8, negative 13, 2. And now we need to go right. So we need to sort negative 13, 2, which is a subarray of the bigger array, 19, 8, negative 13, 2. So now we go left, and then we reach our base case of negative 13, we return, and then we go right, and then we reach our base case of 2, and then we have two sorted subarrays to work with, negative 13 and 2. And now, once we sort them, we're going to have a sorted array of negative 13, 2 to return as the right portion to our original call, 19, 8, negative 13, 2. And now we're going to have uh, these two so portions to sort. And then we have a merged portion, which is negative, t negative 13, 2, 8, 19. And this is the left portion of the overarching call, which is 19, 8, negative 13, 2, negative 5, 4, 130. This is the sorted of the left portion. And now at the very top of our call, we go to the right. And now we need to sort negative 5, 4, 130. And now we go left, and now we need to sort negative 5 and 4. And then we go left, and now we need to sort negative 5. Negative 5 is sorted, so we return. And then we need to go right. 4 is sorted, so we return. And then we have to merge two sorted arrays, one is negative 5 and one has 4, and then we return that as a sorted array as negative 5, 4. And then that is the left portion sorted, and now we need to go right. We need to sort 130, and then we go left, and then we need to sort 100. 100 is sorted, return. 
and then we go right, and then 30, and then 30 is sorted return. And now we have two sorted arrays to work with. We have 130. We sort those, we merge those two sorted arrays, which we can do in m plus n time, or you know, linear time with respect to each array, and then we have 30 and 100. And then next, we have the left portion and the right portion, which are sorted, and now we need to merge those into a sorted array. And then we get negative 5, 4, 30, and 100. And now, this, now we have the left sorted and the right sorted of the overarching call. So now, we can sort them into our final result that we return as the answer. So, negative 13, negative 5, 2, 4, 8, 19, 30, and 100. So this is how merge sort works. Merge sort was going to split, split, split until it reaches a base case, return, split. So it's going to split left and right, and then merge whatever it called to get split left or right. Um, and then return that to its caller. So it's just recursive subroutines within themselves. Let's come back to the middle and really um, let this all sink in. So whatever we get back from our merge sort calls is going to be a sorted array. Merge sort returns a sorted array. So when we reach our base case of one item, that's just one item. We can return that. And then the caller has uh, two base cases to work with, two single items, then it can sort it in uh, n plus n time or linear time respectively to each array and return that as a sorted array. And then the guy above him does the same thing. So this is why, um, this is how the recursive subroutines of mer merge sort work out. Each call of merge sort gets us closer and closer to the answer. Each subroutine does its thing and returns a sorted array. Um, and we eventually get to the answer. So it doesn't all happen at once, you know, with those diagrams saying we split, split. Um, that shows what happens level by level, but it doesn't show the actual tempo, temporal ordering of the order it happens. So that's kind of how it works. So why is merge sort and log n? So merge sort has two parts. It has the merging function and it has the splitting function. So the splitting function can split the input up to log n times. In our example, we had array with eight values. This means that we could split the array once, so or three times. So if we had eight, split that once, we get four, split it twice, we get two, split it one more time, and we're down to a single element. We cannot split further, further than that, and therefore we're going to have log n levels. Log of eight is three, or log base two of eight is three, because what power do we need to power two by to get eight? And the answer is three. That is what a logarithm basically asks, or more specifically, log base two. So that addresses the splitting function. We can split up to log n times, and then in each of those splits, we're going to be doing a merge and the merge takes a uh, linear time it takes o of n time so at each of the log n split levels we're going to be applying linear work and hence that is why we get n log n as the runtime for merge sort this is only a really rough analysis um, there is a better um, expression of the recurrence relation, I'll leave links below. Um, it actually gets a lot more fine-tuned than what I just said, but the overarching concept is just that, you know, log n levels and linear work on each level with the merging function, and that is how we get n log n. And also, if you want to look through the example that we just did, I will leave the link to those in the description slash comment um, so that you can look over that trace of the example that we did. If you like videos like this, if this helped you out, um, I'd love if you subscribe to the channel. Um, this channel is made for programming interviews and helping you um, do your best on the programming interview or if you're moving between positions. My goal is to make a central resource to help all software engineering candidates um, thrive and succeed in the interview. So that's what this channel is about and I'm gonna go.